Hello everybody, this is Dr. Scott. In this experiment, we are going to make methane, a flammable gas, and then we're going to blow it up. So you may be familiar with the, the Lewis structure of methane, otherwise known as CH4, commonly called natural gas. We've, we've drawn this Lewis structure. It's a C surrounded by four H's. And what we're going to look at here is the shape of this molecule. Is, 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 is methane really flat like it's drawn on paper? And we also have this thing called the bond angle from an H on the outside. Pick an H to the C in the middle to any other H. So you might notice that looks like a right angle, 90 degrees. Is that true? So before we make methane out of thin air and blow it up, consider whether this molecule is really flat, whether the atoms are really connected at 90 degrees. So you might ask what gives this molecule its shape. Recall that each solid line in the diagram represents a pair of electrons. Each bond is electrons. These electrons are negative, and so they would want to repel each other. And the idea is, as it's drawn, right, we draw the bonds, we draw these electrons so they can each have as much space as possible. Again, they'd be pushing each other apart. And again, on, on the diagram, on the flat picture, the Lewis structure, if you will, it looks like these electrons, these bonds are oriented at 90 degrees. So I want you to keep that in mind because we're going to make methane out of thin air with the help of some balloons. And the balloons, which are going to push each other apart, are meant to represent the electrons, that is, the bonds in methane. So uh, a common misconception with this experiment is that the balloons represent the, 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 the hard part of the atom, the nucleus. And that's not true. What we're talking about is that the balloons are representing the bonds, the electrons, because the electrons repel, much like the balloons are going to push on each other, kind of jockey for space as we, again, make methane out of thin air. So you need four balloons to make this happen. You're going to take your first balloon, inflate it, and I might suggest that you don't inflate it all the way. I'm going to tie the knot around a couple fingers, maybe like you normally would, slip my finger out, and you've inflated a balloon, probably nothing new there. That represents one bond. Notice we got four, four of these bonds in methanes. We need three more balloons to go. And this knot, I'm going to tie the balloons together, this knot represents the central carbon atom, the C in the middle. As you might remember, most of an atom is empty space with electrons moving around. And so this isn't really too bad of a scale for the nucleus of the carbon to represent this little tiny knot in the balloon. The electrons taking up most of the space, as you see, are a lot bigger. So this is a, this is a reasonably good representation of, of, of what a nucleus and electrons look like. So without further ado, let's blow up the second balloon. I'm going to take care to get it approximately the same size. It doesn't have to be exact. Now, there's a little trick here if you want to do this in five minutes and not an hour. I'm going to tie the knot like I normally would around a couple fingers, but I'm not going to release the knot yet. Notice here what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip the knot of the first balloon through the not quite yet formed knot of the second balloon and maybe hold it in place. And when I release, I got two balloons now tied together, right? I've done this a few times, so that's, that's the trick. Don't tie them first and hope to get them together second. You can't really get them together with tape. You want to do it like I just showed. Third pair of electrons, a blue balloon. Blow it up to about the same, about the same size. And now, getting a little bit trickier, I'm going to actually tie this knot around the other two balloons. So you see I used a, a finger, you can use two fingers to tie the knot, to tie the knot, but you got to get it tied around 
the other two balloons so that I've got now three balloons tied together. And oh, I've, I've ran out of blue balloons. So let's, let's pretend that this white balloon is a blue balloon, right, for the same thing. And again, I'm going to apply the same strategy of... Uh-oh, we got a problem here. I lost a balloon. Got the same strategy of tying the knot around the balloons. I guess you see what happens if you don't take a moment to secure the knot. So that one is gone. Oh, look at that. I do have another, another blue balloon after all. All right, and this is an experiment. Things aren't always going to go right. So you might think you need four balloons to do this, right? I, I would suggest you buy six balloons, count for an error or two, especially if this is your very first time doing it. So a little bit of wrestling, but again, I've used the strategy of tying the knot around the balloons, around my finger. I'm going to let it release, and now I've got four balloons together, again, pretending that these are all blue balloons, all the same. It looks like the methane. And if we look at the bond angles, you might notice that everything is at 90 degrees. But look what happens if you perturb this atom just a little bit. That 90 degrees isn't stable. But now I've snapped the balloons into a stable formation. You might notice that it looks like a triangle, an equilateral triangle on all four sides. And the fact that there's four equilateral triangles on the face of this shape is why we'd call it a tetrahedron. So the shape of methane, CH4, is not flat at right angles. We call it in chemistry a tetrahedron. And now let's examine the bond angles. As we look top down, and we look where 90 degrees would be, and we see that the balloon is a little past 90, maybe almost 20 degrees past 90. In fact, this angle would be 109.5. There's a little bit of geometry involved there. A lot of people just know it's 109.5. But let's get to the point. Imagine this wasn't methane, the flammable gas, but rather ammonia, NH3. If you drew the Lewis structure for NH3, there'd be three hydrogens, but also a pair of electrons connected on top. And those electrons still take up space. So when you're asking, what's the shape of ammonia? We call it a pyramid represented by the blue balloons. You see, they're all angled down a little bit. They're not flat, but they're not a tetrahedron either. So all four balloons being the same represent CH4 methane. If you think of this white balloon without any atom there, that would represent the shape of ammonia, NH3. We call that one a pyramid. So there's, there's a difference between a pyramid and a tetrahedron in chemistry. Let's pretend that white balloon is blue again because ammonia is not a flammable gas like methane. And let's blow up the methane. And now we're left with three balloons connected together. And you might notice that this shape is flat. If you think of a clock divided into three spaces as the, the hour hand sweeps out from noon to four, that would be 120 degrees on the bond angle. This represents a molecule like CH2O, H2CO, formaldehyde, also a flammable gas. So let's blow it up. And then you're left with two balloons. This could represent a, a molecule like carbon dioxide with carbon in the middle and oxygen on each end of the balloons. Carbon dioxide's not a flammable gas, but just for fun, let's blow it up and we're done.